What was the picture? If a picture is worth a thousand words, what's a movie worth? Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 photographers in movies. For this list, we're choosing the most memorable big screen characters that deal with photography throughout cinema history. Nice camera, man. Thanks, Drew. Our picks range from the artistically brilliant to the disturbingly eerie. Warning, spoilers lie ahead. We have one shot left. Oh, that's okay. Oh, it's a shame to waste it. Oh, no, really, it's fine. Oh, no, please. <laughs> Go horrible. Number 10, Pecker, Pecker. Be right down! Baltimore native and teen Pecker is an aspiring photographer who wields an inexpensive Canon Canonet 28. Always got that broken down camera as mama found at the thrift shop. His photos often feature seemingly unspectacular moments in his family and friends' lives. But when New York art connoisseur and professional dealer Rory Wheeler comes across Pecker's work, she turns him into an overnight sensation. Thank you all for being so nice to me buying my photographs. <laughs> I, I want to thank Rory for liking my pictures, even though some of them are out of focus and sometimes I don't get the exposure right. However, Pecker's friends and family are picked apart in the public spotlight. I want my friends and I want my family and I want my career back. In order to counter this, Pecker moves his latest show from New York to Baltimore and exclusively features photos of his family and friends critics in very unflattering moments, all while showing us the power of a photograph. Well, I'm not hungry, and besides, I'm late for my photo shoot with Tina. Number nine, Peter Parker, Spider-Man franchise. Uh, can I take your picture? I need one with a student in it. While Spider-Man may have been one of the most easily recognizable superheroes in the Marvel Universe, the man behind the mask, otherwise known as Peter Parker, is a freelance photographer whose only gig is at the fictional New York newspaper, The Daily Bugle. I'll give you 300. That's a standard freelance fee. Tear up page one, run that photo instead. Headline? Spider-Man, hero or menace? Peter realizes that he can easily sell exclusive photographs of Spider-Man in action and quickly creates the excuse that Spider-Man is an acquaintance of his. I've been kind of busy taking pictures of your friend. Could we get off that subject? It's only after being possessed by an extraterrestrial symbiote in Spider-Man 3 that Peter develops enough of an ego to demand a full-time job from the paper. I know it makes a good picture, and I've been here a long time. If there's a staff job, Mr. Jameson, I think I deserve it. He's right, Jonah. Peter's been with us for years. He's done a great job. Number eight, Deanne Arbus. Fur, an imaginary portrait of Deanne Arbus. Fur is a fictionalized biography of the real-life photographer Deanne Arbus. In 1958 New York, the wealthy Deanne is an assistant to her photographer husband, Alan. May I ask, uh, what do you photograph, Diane? Me? Um, oh no, I'm, I'm not the photographer. <laughs> no, my husband is. Frustrated with her traditional marriage, she becomes infatuated with her neighbor, Lionel Sweeney, who is afflicted with hypertrichosis, also known as werewolf syndrome. What are you gonna do instead? I'd like to take some photographs of my own. While pursuing Lionel, Deanne quickly enters a physically and socially different world unlike anything she's ever known. Well, Alan tells us you're doing a little extra art project, a photo study of your neighbors. Yes, sort of. The film also tries to fictionally explain why Deanne Arbus' real-life work so often featured her generations socially marginalized, such as dwarfs and members of the transgendered community. Lionel's just the greatest, isn't he? Mm. He is. Number seven, Anna Cameron, Closer. I liked your book. Thanks. Photographer Anna Cameron is contracted to do publicity photos for novelist Dan Wolf and his girlfriend, Alice Aris, a former stripper and the subject of Dan's forthcoming book. I've never been photographed by a professional before. I'd really appreciate it. I can pay you. Uh, no, I, I'd like to. Dan obsesses over Anna, stalks her, poses as her in a chat room, and unintentionally sets her up with dermatologist Larry Gray. Eventually, Dan and Anna have an affair while her photographs bring Alice and Larry to meet. I'm Larry. The doctor. Hello, Dr. Larry. Feel free to call me the Sultan. <laughs> the affair continues despite Anna marrying Larry. Why did you marry me? I stopped seeing him. I wanted us to work. Why did you tell me you wanted children? Because I did. Eventually, Alice returns to stripping. Anna leaves Larry for Dan. Larry pursues Alice. Anna comes back to Larry, and Dan tries to return to Alice but fails. Well, that was complicated. <laughs> Number eight.
Number six, Harlan McGuire, Road to Perdition. Two minutes. You got it, Mr. McGuire. Harlan McGuire is a crime scene photographer that also operates as an assassin. Showing up to a crime scene with his iconic speed graphic camera, McGuire notices his subject isn't exactly dead, so he carefully kills him so he will actually be dead in his photo. Eventually sent by the Irish mob to kill protagonist and hitman Michael Sullivan Sr., after McGuire gets his man, he sets up his camera to record his hitman's final moments, only to be caught off guard by Sullivan Jr. and brought to his own death at his victim's hands. Number five, Mason Evans Jr., Boyhood. Nice, Dad. <laughs> Still got the goods. By following the character of Mason Evans Jr. from the age of six to his late teens, this coming-of-age drama also actually follows the actor that portrays him, Eller Coltrane, as he ages. Developing an interest in photography at 15, Mason shortly begins to study under photography teacher Mr. Turlington. Darkroom time is extracurricular. I mean, technically, you don't ever have to be in here these days. Mr. Turlington is frustrated by Mason's seemingly lethargic attitude and tries to push him artistically. Any dipshit can take pictures, Mason. Art. That's special. What can you bring to it that nobody else can? By his high school senior year, though, Mason's photography has developed to such a point that it earns him a college scholarship and a silver medal in the Texas State Photo Competition, leaving hope for a potential career and a bright future. So Number four, Seymour Cy Parrish, One Hour Photo. Can I help you, Cy? Just dropping off some film, just a customer. One hour photo technician Cy has no friends or family. He admires the Yorkin family, whose pictures he's developed for years. Come on. Come on. Infatuation soon turns to obsession as he copies their photos to adorn his walls and tries to bond with them in real life. What was that address again? It's 326 Serrano Terrace. After being rejected, he becomes angry upon discovering the photos reveal the husband's infidelities and takes it upon himself to corner Will with his mistress. Don't do it! <laughs> pretend! This is all pretend! After forcing them into compromising photos intended to be used as blackmail, Sai is arrested for his terrorism. However, things are ended on a rather creepy and open-ended note, as the film's last image is a fantasy portrait of the Yorkins, with Sai included. Number three, LB Jeff Jeffries, Rear Window. New York State sentence for a peeping Tom is six months in the workhouse. Oh, hello, Scott. Bound to a wheelchair after breaking his leg while shooting a racetrack accident, pro photographer Jeff is unable to leave his apartment. How's your leg? It hurts a little. And your stomach? Empty as a football. And you love life? I'm not too active. In order to keep busy and entertained, he obsessively peers out his rear window into his apartment complex's courtyard and learns his neighbor's daily routines. We become a race of peeping toms. What people ought to do is get outside their own house and look in for a change. Using binoculars and a telephoto lens, this peeping tom soon's become convinced that his neighbor Lars Thorwald has killed his wife. A murderer would never parade his crime in front of an open window. Why not? Why, for all you know, there's probably something a lot more sinister going on behind those windows. But after he convinces friends that this is more than just a conspiracy theory, Thorwald himself corners Jeff in his apartment. Lucky for Jeff, he's got his trusty camera's flashbulbs handy, and he uses them to momentarily ward off the suspect by temporarily blinding him just long enough for the police to arrive. Dial! <laughs> Number two, Rocket, City of God. É uma confusão de gente em uma máquina fotográfica. Eu cresci paradão na ideia de ter uma máquina fotográfica. Aspiring photographer Rocket is from the favela, or slum, known as Cidade de Deus in Rio de Janeiro. Mas na Cidade de Deus, se correr o bicho pega, e se ficar o bicho come. Local drug lord Zé Pequeno gets Rocket to photograph his gang. Vai, Buscapé! Tirou a foto do nosso aí! Vambora, Buscapé! Tá esperando o quê, mulher? The film of which falls into the possession of a reporter who prints one of Rocket's photos in the city newspaper. <laughs> Once Rocket learns this, he fears for his life but continues to photograph Zay's gang anyway, unaware that Zay actually enjoys the publicity. 
Agora vamos fazer um corredor ali? Corredor. 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 Todo mundo aqui sem carro. É, pô, carro. Bora, vambora. It's certainly a risky world. And in fact, Zay is eventually murdered by his own gang. But Rocket's photographs of the dead drug dealer's body ultimately allows the film's narrator to improve his future and get a professional internship. Pô, está de mais tá ganhando dinheirinho, né, pô? Dinheirinho, merreca, mas pô. E aí, é jornalista? Comeu? Aham. Ela é gostosa? Mais ou menos. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. Hey boss, shoot us. When are you gonna take it? Sometimes I don't. If I like a moment, I mean me, Personally, I don't like to have the distraction of the camera. Number one, Thomas, blow up. That's it, keep it up, lovely. Yeah, make it come. Great, no, no, head up, head up. Thomas is a successful London fashion photographer that's loosely based on real life photographer David Bailey. Bored at a shoot, Thomas wanders to Marion Park and snaps photos of two lovers, one of whom becomes furious over the voyeurism. What are you doing? Stop it! Stop it! Give me those pictures. You can't photograph people like that. But that's not the worst part of it. Upon developing the photos, Thomas notices a man holding a gun and a body in the background. Things get even more complicated when in the midst of random events, such as the Yardbirds performing in a club, Thomas learns that all of his prints and negatives are stolen, except for an enlarged photo that focuses on the body. Shouldn't you call the police? That's the body. Unfortunately, this means Thomas can't solve the murder. This doesn't only leave him forever puzzled and audiences forever questioning who done it, but also ensures that the Oscar-nominated blow-up has a permanent place in cinema history. Easy to live with. Do you agree with our list? Can you believe it? Who are your favorite movie photographers? For more excellent top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to watchmojo.com. Do you